So we're moving on to activity number three here, where we're actually analyzing the data from the severe storms. And so we're going to take the cards that we um, thought were stronger evidence. Um, so um, card F, which was a source published, um, sorry, it was a published research article written by many scientists. Um, so card D, which was a government website focused on weather across the world, and card A, which was um, information from the National Weather Service. So what we're going to do is we're going to read and discuss um, side two for each of the cards. Um, and then we're going to look about what do these big storms have in common? And in which storms do we think that the most energy was transferred? Um, so let's get started. All right, so on the screen, you should see um, our first evidence card here. Um, and this evidence card um, came from um, sorry, guys, um, the National Weather Service, which, okay. So, and this says on August 13th, 2014, a summer storm dumped record-breaking amounts of rain on New York, flooding the streets and leaving many people stranded in need of rescue. Um, below is the weather data for the storm. All right. So what do the storms have in common and what, um, in which storm do you think most energy was transferred? So before we do this, there's a, um, there's something on this chart that we haven't really talked about. Um, so while we're going over these, you might notice some information on the cards about humidity. Humidity is commonly used to measure water vapor in the air. The higher the percent, the more water vapor in the air. You can compare the humidity during a storm to the average humidity during the month to see if during the storm there was more or less water vapor in the air. So I'm going to look first at this humidity, please, right? So on, on August 13th, Oops, I wanted the highlighter. On August 13th, right? So this was the day of the storm. It had 78% humidity. It normally has 68% humidity. So when we think about this, it had more water vapor, right? And I'm just gonna put water, WV for water vapor. Okay, um, I'm gonna look again, whoops, um, here. So those wind speeds, okay, on the day of the storm versus that average. So we had an increase in wind. And what we saw in 3.1 is that when we had um, more wind, that wind could push up that air parcel. And then the other thing that we're gonna look at here is our temperature. All right, so there was the day of, and here was the average. So when we look at this, there wasn't much change. So I'm gonna put no, so I'll, I'll circle with a line through it. It's kind of no, and then a triangle means change in temperature. All right, so let's look and see um, at a different um, choice and see what we've got. So I'm gonna, when I do this, what happens? Cool, all right. So we're gonna look at card D, which is a government website focused on weather around the world. Nope, no, we're, yes we are, sorry. Okay, so on, ah, where did it go, Mr. Hume? <laughs> Here we go, so. On July 21st, 2012, a massive rainstorm. All right, so we've got a massive rainstorm. Hit Beijing, China, breaking a 60-year record, causing dangerous flooding all over the city. And a single day received more than 18 inches of rain. In the case of the Beijing rainstorm, temperatures had been unusually high during July. Uh-oh, skittios, guys. Um, hopefully that comes back. Um, and then the highest temperature leading up to the storm was 34 degrees. The average humidity that day was 92%. And the pressure was low, surrounded by an area of high pressure. All right. So 
when we think about this, right? Oh no, guys. So, um, just rooting us back in this because there's probably a, a a lag in the video here. So our our second source here, um, we were looking at a massive rainstorm, and we had some unusually high um, temperatures here, um, and then the pressure was low surrounded by an area of high pressure. And so thinking about what we've got here in this, right, that um, so we've got high temperatures. Okay, um, we've got that, that low um, pressure system surrounded by a high. So we know that we've got some wind there. And then we've got lots of humidity. All right, so let's look at our last evidence card for us to figure out, um, oops, for us to figure out, so what do all big storms have in common and which do we see the most energy transferred and why? So that brings us to here. All right, so India often has heavy rainfall during the summer because warm air with high water vapor travels to the coastal cities from in, from the Indian Ocean. Usually the total rain but rain, total rainfall in Mumbai for the month of July is 74 centimeters, which is 29. On July 26th, there was a record-breaking amount of rainfall. This day had a typical high temperature and typical high water vapor, but in a single day, the rainfall totaled 37 inches. So thinking about this, it had typical high and high water vapor. The storm was different because of the pressure system. This caused air parcels full of water vapor to be moved um, high up into the troposphere by wind. So thinking about those three, um, those three cards, what did we see? What we saw over and over is that wind was a big um, factor that produces large storms, um, as well as temperature and humidity. And that wind came in, in those low pressure systems, um, surrounded by these high pressure systems. All right, guys, let's start looking at our homework.